Hey guys, it's me, Meteor, and welcome to my Q&A session. Alright, I have a lot of questions here that people ask me, so thank you all for the support. I made it actually split this up into separate videos because you did ask me a lot of questions, and some of them may go on for quite a long time in my explanations. So, yeah. Uh, the first one, and by the way, if I stumble or anything in my words, or I get my thoughts messed up or jumbled, I'm sorry, I'm not going to be doing any retakes because it takes a really long time to actually narrate all this if I actually... Mess up one, I'm not going to do any stupid jump cuts or anything like you see in some other top YouTubers. But I'm just going to leave it all in, just, you know, ad, ad lib, is that the right word? Anyways, let's just move on and get right into it. The first question I'm going to start off with, I'm going to be going down from top to bottom and who posted stuff to me first and who asked questions to me last. So let's just start off with this one because I think it's a good way to start. What, so George Jusen, I'm sorry if I butchered that name completely, I'm sorry. He actually asked me, what is my recording program? Now, do you mean I, for programs I use to actually record video, like actual capture video, to record my voice, or do you mean the one I actually use to edit my video, because I use different software for each one. If I'm recording something off my console, I use my HobHog Capture, which actually comes with the HobHog device itself, the HDPVR2, so that's what I use to actually capture that footage. If it's a DS or 3DS game, I actually use 3DS Capture, which just came with the mod that Loopy made, which is a modification of my 3DS, which you can tell there. It's actually got that modification there, so that's what I use to record that. If you're asking what I use to actually record my voice, I use WavePad. It is by far the best and most accurate voice recording software I've seen anywhere. In fact, I, I don't trust a lot of these in built-in capture your video and your voice at the same time because a lot of times you actually mess up through I can't really tell how loud my voice is, how well it's, if it's being completely trapped by the actual voice or the sound of the music of the game. It's hard for me to tell, but with WavePad I can see exactly how loud my voice is if I'm using the right device and it's very well, very easy to use and probably my favorite software out there. Uh, if you mean what I use to actually edit my videos, Unlike a lot of uh, popular Pokemon Let's Play, not Pokemon Let's Players, Pokemon Battlers who actually use the same program, a cracked version of Vegas Pro, when they were all going through that whole thing making frames or whatever, I didn't do that. I'm not a big fan of piracy, I'm completely against it, by the way. So I'm like, I'm going to go find a video editing program that actually works for me. In fact, up until my Kirby 2 Arena run for Kirby Return of Dreamland, I was using Windows Movie Maker. That was painful, and usually it kind of saturated the color, removed a lot of the quality I wanted, and I couldn't actually put more than one track at a time, and I definitely couldn't do picture in picture, so that was way out. So then I tested several different programs. I tried Cyber Iver Media, I've tried Cy like uh, Cyber something, I've tried, uh, what, what is that one? I tried Adobe, I've tried Sony Vegas, I've tried several different programs, but there's actually one that had the supported the most file types, was the easiest to use, and overall gave me the best quality results I've seen. That one is actually Magix Movie Edit Pro MX. This is actually version 12, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, I think it's probably the best version that's come out for a long time. In fact, I tried using their newer versions, like 2013 and 2014. Uh, they changed a lot of things I don't like, and the features I've been used to with this are changed, and sometimes actually made the quality look worse, and it, I don't know why they changed it, but I think this one's probably the best version, in my opinion. So yeah, that was a pretty long explanation. That already went on for about four minutes. All right. Let's go ahead and move on from the bottom of the list and actually start these questions here. The first person who actually started this actually got me to actually finally do one of these, despite the fact I was wanting to do them for a while, is uh, Matthias Silva Sousa, apparently. He has a lot of questions for me. He apparently gave me five. All right. The first one he gave me was... Do you think the Kirby franchise can have a big and epic awesome history if Hal wants? Well, yes I do. In fact, a lot- there's- I've seen more speculation between plot lines and theories with Kirby than I have for a lot of other games. In fact, I've seen it more than Metroid, although to be fair, Metroid hasn't been good since... Prime? Maybe Prime 2? Yeah, since then it's kind of just been... Nah, nothing- nothing really special or great. Just, and what am I talking about this? But yes, I mean, we see a lot of things, like from the Dark Matter Saga to Nightmare to Dark Nebula actually being almost confirmed to be a part of Dark Matter. There's a whole lot of things and ties, and even Magalore referencing 
marks and the star rod and all the items of the ancients that were created that would pe that could be used for power, good or evil. There's actually a huge storyline tied in there. It's just I think Hell makes it in such a way to where they want to actually add speculation for people rather than actually just go out and actually say what the storyline is or how they all tie together. They just really want to like everything you see from like the pause screen descriptions, the text you see from references. You see references here and there, anywhere even from all the new soul bosses looking exactly like Josh's soul and having the same attacks and everything. There's a lot of intertwined things there, and I think if Hal really wanted to, they could go all out with the history and just go full force, and it could be very interesting. If they made like a Hyrule Historia for Kirby, I would buy it in a heartbeat. Well, I would probably buy anything that's Kirby related in a heartbeat. Like Kirby Fighters Z and uh, DDD Drum Dash Z is coming out, that's pretty cool, but not what you asked. But yes, in short, I do think they could very well go out with the whole storyline if they wanted to, but really, I think they're really trying to make it speculation based intentionally because it causes a lot more discussion and gets more people to actually play the games and whatnot. That's just me. Uh, second question. What do you think of doing other Kirby LP, Adventure, Nightmare in Dreamland? I, you, you listed like every single game here. Let's see. Nightmare in Dreamland, Amazing Mirror, Canvas Curse, Mass Attack, and even my favorites, Epic Yarm and Squeak Squad. Um, well, let's put it this way. I will be doing other Kirby games. Yes, that, that goes without saying. Will I be doing nothing but Kirby games? No. It's with, uh... It's like if you have the, your favorite food over and over and over, eventually you're going to want to change it up before, you get, before it gets stale and you get tired of it completely. That's exactly how I feel with Kirby and Pokemon. If I keep on doing the same thing over and over and over, it gets repetitive and I don't feel like doing it anymore. It gets boring. I don't want that to happen to Kirby because Kirby's one of my favorite franchises out there. So I do not want that to happen. But, yes, I do plan to be doing other L Kirby LPs. Now, the thing about Amazing Mirror, though, is the same reason why I won't do Metro... Actually, I'll get into that later. Let's see. Uh, actually, that's a different question. But, basically, it's the same reason why I won't ever do a Let's Play of Metroid. I love Metroid games. They're probably one of... They were my favorite series up until Kirby came around and blew me away. But, the thing about Metroid games is why I won't really ever Let's Play them, is because there's a crap ton to miss. Like, with Kirby games, I could do a practice run of each level, looking in, finding all the secrets and everything, and play the game. Maybe I'll miss one or two things. But, if you miss one or two things in Metroid, or another game, it could mess you up. Because you have to go all the way back, find out what you missed in what sector, which, what, which power gives you which upgrade of which places. And Amazing Mirror is almost exactly like that, so I probably would not be ever doing a Let's Play of Amazing Mirror unless I was really feeling ambitious and wanted to say, you know what, screw it, let's do it, let's go for it. But, uh, although, to be fair, there is that Mirror World version of Zero in there, so... I, I guess, just to show that off, I could contemplate doing an Amazing Mirror Let's Play at some point, but let me just go ahead and move on to another question here. Question number three. Do I like Mortal Kombat? If you like, what do you think of being an LP of Mar Mortal Kombat 9, and what do you think of Mortal Kombat X? Despite of all the references and jokes I always make to Mortal Kombat, like Fatality, um, Flawless Victory, and things like that, I actually do not play the Mortal Kombat series. The last time I played it was way back in the arcade version, and that was pretty much it. But, uh, I don't actually play any rated M games. It's a personal choice I made. I don't play any games that have any type of swearing, violence, blood, any crap like that. No, I, I'm not. I'm not a fan of those kinds of games. It's like if I want to see so, how realistic someone could die or get mutilated or something else like that, I would just watch the news. I mean, I, it's I, that's the way I feel. If I play video games, I want to escape from that. I want to actually be in a world, do something in the world that I can't actually, that I could actually do whatever I want. Like Mario, you can't ever jump on enemies or do a lot of things. Oh, there's just so many things you could do that you can't do in the normal world, which is like the way I like video games, and Kirby, and other of those fun-filled games and everything. So, no, I'm not a big fan of Mortal Kombat, and I would never do it in Mortal Kombat Let's Play, so that's pretty much that. Next question, what is your favorite Super Smash Bros. game, and which is your favorite character in Smash? Eh, I honestly... Melee? I'm not... I, you're asking the wrong person, because I'm not really competitive in Smash Brothers. I don't really care for the series all too much. I loved Melee when it came out, but if I want to go back and play it again, it just feels like the same thing. I mean, essentially it comes down to me just dodging, 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 rolling, rolling, spam special attack, spam special attack, get owned by my friends who are substantially better than me. Yeah, that's... But if I was saying my favorite character in Smash is, I like to main Kirby and Brawl. 
Uh, mainly it was Marth, and then I also mained Kirby and the original Smash Brothers. I, I that that's pretty much it. I mean, I, I like I said, I'm not the greatest player, but that's just my personal opinion. I am going to probably get the. I'm definitely going to begin the new Smash Brothers games coming out, but I'm probably not going to be playing very competitively at all. Okay, now let's see here. What do you think of starting? Top 10 or top 5 list, for example, could be copy abilities, characters, bosses, soundtracks. I no. I just think those are complete clickbait topics. I don't like anything like that. If someone says like, oh look what this person said, or can you believe this happened? You won't believe if you click this link, or look at all the top 10 opinions that I have. I just think those are easy ways to get views. I'm not a big fan of that. I don't like trying to just spam for viewers. I don't like doing that. If I want to get something that I know is going to get a lot of views, I want to show work for it. Like the true arena runs I have, or those 1 versus 100 battles I had with Pokemon, I actually put a lot of effort into those because I know they would get a lot of views, but I do that intentionally so I could actually, but it's something I actually could take pride in. I can't exactly take pride in a top 10 video. That's just me. So, uh, that's pretty much that. Who, who posted a comment here? Someone else posted a comment here. Uh, I'll, just, I'll just ignore that later, but I'm not looking at that. Anyway, the gamer girl 2330 writes the following question. Will you ever stream something besides Pokemon, like maybe something Kirby related? It's funny that you should say that, because I actually have streamed things other than Pokemon. I've actually streamed Mario Kart, I actually have streamed the Kirby 2 Arena runs in uh, Return of Dreamland, that one I was actually successful in. Then I also streamed my attempt for doing the True Arena in Kirby Superstar Ultra, which I wasn't able to successfully do in a live stream. And uh, I will also be planning to do other live streams, like I plan to be, be streaming Mario Kart 8. I'm definitely going to be streaming Kirby 64's Blast Rush mode because I know a lot of people are going to love me to see, love me to take on Acro and completely get frustrated and kill myself. Yeah, that's I'm planning to be doing that. So yes, I've already have been doing other streams besides Pokemon, and I plan to do other streams besides Pokemon. I just need to find time to actually get around to actually do those, or even work on them. Let's see, next question. If you ever finish LPing all of the Kirby games, what's the next video game franchise that you'll start LPing? You mean if I actually literally completed every single Kirby game that exists? Uh, every one that's future will come out in the future, if I completed all of those, will I work on next? Well. I have been doing, uh, I have did Pokemon XD Let's Play, I have done Star Fox Adventures Let's Play, I've done Klonoa, I've done, uh, what else have I done? Oh yeah, Neopets the Darkest Fairy. I have, bef I have actually gone off and actually did stuff other than Kirby, so I will be tackling other games as well. If I was to actually choose a game besides Kirby to go into, I actually went into the random chance of completing every single Kirby game and not having any other new ones come out ever again. I'll probably move on to other Pokemon games, spin-off games. But that's but Pokemon games. Now let's see here. What's next? Besides Kirby and Pokemon, what are your other favorite video game franchises? Well, like I said, Metroid, definitely. Star Fox. Let me look at my game rack here. <coughs> uh, Sonic. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Zach, Zach, that's not really a series. Mario games are probably my fan, probably my favorites of all time. There are a lot of good Mario games out there. From Paper Mario to Mario and Luigi. Mario Galaxy. There's... Mario games are just fantastic. No matter if the 2D games, the 3D games, the spin-offs, I don't know what it is, but Mario makes some really fantastic games. Probably my favorite in the series, and Mario Galaxy 2 is probably my favorite game of all time. Uh, what other games? Pikmin. I love Pikmin, but that's only three games, not really a franchise. Well, I guess it could be. Uh, yeah, I guess that pretty much answers that question. Mm. Oh yeah, Rayman games. Rayman games are awesome. I just I. Looking past the whole issue with Ubisoft and Nintendo, Wii U, Rayman Legends, whatever, Rayman games are awesome challenge. They have probably the, some of the most innovation and platform I've ever seen. And in the case of Rayman 3, it just has some witty and awesome dialogue that's just hilarious to listen to. I just, I just think it's really fun. That's my personal opinion on that. So yes, there are other games I like besides Kirby and Pokemon. Maybe I'll actually go ahead and do one of those games at some point in time. Oh yeah, Zelda. Duh. Zelda, hello. That's one of the best games to come out in... Zelda. Duh. Alright. And let's see here. Do I- Okay, that's a spoiler. Let me just make a little spoiler tag right there. Right there, okay. I'm, until you- You could go by the video until you see that the spoiler tag is gone. Put it on mute until that little spoiler tag is gone. Anyway. Do you think that both Magalore and Queen Sectonia make good playable characters, bosses, and Super Smash Brothers series? Magalore? 
I'm gonna say no. I mean, Magalore's in his when you fought him was essentially just a floating orb with arms and wings. I guess he didn't really have a full body structure or anything. I mean, technically, a lot of bosses, Kirby bosses, are like that. But I can't really see him being a playable character in Smash Brothers for that reason. Um, I mean, as a boss, maybe, but I don't, I don't know. I mean, I don't see why we'd ever, why we need to fight fight Magalore again when he's already turned good. That's just me. Uh, as for Queen Sectonia, though, she has, I think she could make a good boss, not sure about playable character, because the way she actually has, like, two staves that she can actually transform into swords, like, one is actually shoots out little beams, and, like, like one little bolt of electricity, one shoots out little shots of, like, little orbs of electricity, and she can actually just switch, switch them into actually swords, and actually fight that way. She could have, actually, you know, she would make a great fighter in Smash Brothers, I think. She would make a great fighter. But they're never gonna add her because she'd be a spoiler essentially, and they don't. I don't really know of any characters in Smash Brothers. Correct me if I'm wrong. That are actually a complete and utter spoiler in every way possible. Correct me if I'm wrong. All right, so that's it for Gamer Girl here. Let's go over to Samuel One Two Three Four Two. What would you say was the best Wi-Fi battle you have done? Uh, probably anything in fourth gen. But let. That's a vague question. You mean like the best battle I've had in terms of like neck and neck, great competitive thinking back and forth? If that's the case, probably a lot of 4th gen. I don't know if one battle specifically I have to actually go through each and every one of my videos to find out which one was. But uh, I would say the ones I'm probably the most proud of are probably my 25 sub special. Wow, wow 25 subs. That was a long time ago. And my uh, 1 versus 100 battles that I've had. Those took me a lot of time to do, but seeing the end result was just like, ah, look at that, it's, it's great. But the great part about the 25 sub special was the fact it was they were 6 really awful Pokemon, but I actually pulled off a defeat with them on my first try. Because I put a lot of effort and thought into what the movesets could be, like what I could use, how well I could do it, and it actually worked out quite nicely for me. So, I, I don't think I could have... I'm not saying the team's invincible by getting one victory, no, but, but yeah, I would say Fort all of Fortune is probably my favorite battles, just for the fact in fourth gen, you could do whatever the heck you wanted. There was no, you, you had a certain amount of Pokemon, there were a good amount of walls, there were a good amount of um, sweepers, there were a good mix of tanks, there were a good mix of everything. You could make an NU Pokemon. If you take, took it the right way, you can make it completely viable and owe you and actually own life with it. That was possible in 4th gen. You could do that kind of stuff. Now, in 5th and 6th gen, everything's overpowered. Stall is completely... doesn't even exist at this point anymore. And I, I just don't... I'm Ever since 5th gen came out, I haven't really been that good competitively. Because I'm not used... I was never used to that. Not to mention the fact that everyone else was using a a pirated copy of the Japanese version and making ROMs of it and like eight months in advance of what I could possibly do since I don't pirate things. So all the big name YouTubers around 5th gen were already eight months ahead of me in battling competitively and I was just getting started. So and then there's 6th gen. It's like, hey guys, you know how overpowered everything was in 5th gen and how broken the entire metagame was? Yeah, we made some more counters for that, and uh, we had the fairy type, which is actually more broken than probably even dragons were back in every other gen possible. Have fun! Yeah, I, I, I don't like the way metagame's taken, but I do think most of my good battles were back from 4th gen, because back then, I was really good at the metagame and I could do whatever I wanted. Now it's pretty much, you're using standard or get out. If you, if you use a gimmick set, it's not going to work. In 4th gen, a gimmick set could work. Not anymore. I mean, there are a few that will, but most of that time, you're just going to be going standard and that's it. Uh, it's making about 20 minutes. You know what? Let's see here. Uh, if you were a Pokemon or discovered a brand new Pokemon, what typing and abilities would it have? I want to see a Pokemon that has a ghost normal ability. I mean, think about it. It would be able to resist fighting. It would be able to resist ghost. It would be able to resist normal types. It would be able to res it has three complete immunities in it right there. The only thing that would be able to hurt it is ghost. Well, no, ghost wouldn't hurt it. Dark and this fairy. This fairy super effective against ghosts. I, I'll, I'll put a little thing right there. I don't quite remember the typing for fairy right now. Wow, I don't know why my mind's just breaking there. But uh, 
yeah, I think it would be a very good typing to see a Pokemon that's actually normal Ghost. I kind of wish that Porygon Z would have been normal Ghost, because I think it would have been great with the dubious disc and everything. Because it's mysterious and ghostly, woo. I think it would have been great, but no. I just want to see a normal Ghost type, type sometime in the future. Uh, what made you start using plushies when you make announcement videos like this one? I don't know. I was trying to think of what to stream. I'm like, huh, let's see. Everyone's making streaming videos, doing all types of different things. What can I do? So I spent about a bit of time looking around my room, just like looking what I could use to make a streaming video or something. And then I saw my Kirby plushie. I'm like, yeah, let's talk in Kirby's voice and uh, say something stupid or whatever. That was my first attempt, and that didn't really go over all too well. I think it was funny, but it's... Then I then I was saw, seeing it again, I'm like, what can I make for another one? I want to do something different other than Kirby. Then I saw Charizard. Then I was like, I don't know. It just went from one thing to another. Then I actually started I started having Charizard doing one, then having another plushie go in and make two funny things. And then eventually I'm like, hey, I could give all these plushies different personalities, different voices, and have them joke with each other, and have them talk to each other. And that's what led to that. I don't. I think it was just something that worked out well and just ended up working out quite nicely. I, I like the end result of that. Uh, yeah, that's all I can really say about that. And with the announcement of Secret Bases also being gyms in Pokemon... What? I... I... I, I, I missed that announcement. Alright, well, <laughs> that's pretty awesome. What typing would you specialize? Ice. Ice is my favorite type. Yes, it is possibly the weakest to everything else that has the most weaknesses, but I just love ice levels in games, and the fact that I just love, I, I think ice types are just cool, calming, I just like the effect, the way ice looks. So I'll probably be doing ice then, but is that serious? Are, can you actually turn a secret base into a gym? Like, your own personal gym? It, how did I not hear about this? If that's true, that is absolutely awesome. Wow, that, my hype for that game just actually skyrocketed if that's the case, that's... Okay, I don't know how I missed that. I guess I haven't really been following that game all too well. Thinking it was just like, oh, it's a remake, I'll get it when it comes out, but that's pretty much it. Alright, so next up we have uh, questions. Two questions from Dylan Langill, the guy that may be the Vivillon. How and when did you become a brony? Wow, that's a, that's a, that's a little food for thought there. Uh, actually, I'm already at 22 minutes. I think I'll cut it off for this video right now, and I'll go on to the rest of them in the next video. Maybe even kind of into another two videos. But this is the first 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 part here. So, uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you look forward to the other two parts. I will be answering all the questions. Anyway, see you guys next time.